Hello and welcome back to Factorio Tightening the Belt Mega Base Guide. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again. Today we are going to be setting up an oil outpost and it's going to uh, it's going to be a little different than a normal outpost and the reason uh, I am showing this on camera is because it's different in, in a way that we're using a different train item which is the fluid wagon. So this is going to be a, a bit of a a different way of doing it. I'm <laughs> struggling for words here. So uh, just a, a quick update. Uh, off camera, when I, I streamed earlier today, so it was on camera but not on episode camera, I set up an iron outpost up here. And we've only half tapped it kind of like this one just because doing the whole thing right now is not needed. Uh, but we've got iron going here and this is hooking in the main line, comes down and goes into our main area here. So we put a four lane balancer and the belts are a little messy, but essentially two of them are going towards our main smelting because we were running pretty low. And then the other one is going to steel. And the fourth one hasn't gone anywhere yet. It will eventually go to another smelter. So that's what we've done there. And uh, I've also pre-set up a bit of track. Uh, I Just a little bit here. We're going to go get this oil, I believe, because we are really struggling on oil. We have pretty much none. So... That is something we need to do. <clears throat> now one other thing I want to go over before we head out is something that I did miss last time and uh, is actually a very cool and important feature. So when I was talking about the requests, uh, there is actually a way you can actually copy paste from a machine to a requester chest for it to automatically request an amount. So let me just uh, quickly, if I could, except I can't. Uh, so we'll just, <laughs> we'll use this one for demonstration. Uh, if we go in here and say we do circuits, right, and we shift right click to copy, shift left click to paste, um, this thing is now requesting 45 iron and 135 copper uh, because it is requesting, I believe, for 30 seconds worth of production. And the reason that it's like 45 iron instead of 30 is because of the machine craft speed. It does take this into account. So this is a really cool way to do it uh, because it also bases it on the recipe, right? So if you change the recipe, it's going to, and then, and then copy paste, it'll request them out for 30 seconds of production at the current rate it's doing it, which is really awesome because then once you add in modules, you have a faster machine or you do beacons, it's going to, uh, it's going to obviously change. So I'm going to copy this back just so it's what it should be. But this is a very cool feature if you want to just do that. Sometimes it can be a little high of a request depending on what it is. Like I don't really need 30 seconds worth of production for these. Although I think I'm actually already doing that. Because yeah, because this takes five. So 30 seconds worth would only be six, like six rounds of that so I'm, I'm requesting more than 30 seconds worth of production but sometimes I find it a little too high but for the most part it's really good and just a, a quick note there that uh that can be quite nice so just let me make sure we have everything we need how many oil wells are over here uh three plus five is eight so we're gonna need one that's five how about we don't make all those gears <laughs> I thought I'd got everything but as usual I did not so we're gonna go grab uh, some more rail for one. Definitely need some more rail. And I'm going to stick some stuff in here. We don't want that or pretty much any of this wood. Most is coal. I don't know why I have all these electric engines. So we have that, we have pipe. Uh, let's grab some gears. And then also, so we'll want five, one, two, three. I'm gonna grab some more iron just cause that probably took a bit. Some more circuits. And then we will need a tank, and I've already made a pump. We will need a pump for this, and I've made a tanker wagon. And two locomotives, we could do two tanker wagons, but one, I mean, one is the equivalent of a storage tank, which is a fair bit, right? So I think that should be good, and I'm just making sure uh, we probably want actually quite a few of these because we need to go push out those biters. So let's actually get some laser turrets as well. It's going to pick up a ton of steel here. <clears throat> and uh, I did cap the laser chest. You guys also mentioned very, very good reminder for me to cap the laser chest. Uh, as much as I uh, harped on the fact to cap chests, I didn't do it myself. It's still, it's really easy to forget. So I did cap it, although it, it hadn't become a problem because these are ma making so slowly that it was like only at like 20. Uh, but we're going to take some of these 
And power, we did have a bit of a power outage <laughs> during the stream. It was uh, no coal again, which I'm still figuring out what ex ex exactly is causing this. Um, I did put a four lane balancer here though, which I think is helping. And I did upgrade this all to red belt as well, because yellow belt I think was a bit too slow for this many steam engines. But the plan in my head here is to uh, do maybe like another bank of steam engines and then start transitioning to nuclear. I would like to start doing that. So, cause it's, you know, it's a really cool process and it's fairly, uh, I, I don't know if, well, complicated. For a new player, it is complicated. Uh, you know, it, it just is for a newer player. So, uh, you know, I wanna go through all that. And uh, to start it off, we should get this research. So it's a thousand of each uh, red, green, blue. But that's not too big of a deal. And it unlocks all of this stuff that we'll need which we'll go over when we get there. So let's go ahead and get in the train and start building this uh, rail line. We're going to uh, gonna do what I like to call Wallace and Gromit style. If you've ever seen that show, it's um, or movies, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. Where the, <laughs> one of the characters is like being chased by something and gets in like a, a toy locomotive and it's just like placing track down in front of him as fast as he can so it can keep moving, which is essentially what we're doing here. Uh, and I think I actually don't have enough rail. And I also, okay, I do have 28 grenades, luckily. Although these rocks are going to be in the way. We should have also got a fusion reactor. Uh, we do have enough blue circuits, I think, at this point. So we will want to do that when we get back. I just forgot. But that is going to be important because then we can get personal roboport. And probably an exoskeleton or two would be good. And uh, a shield perhaps, depending how much we can fit in here. This grid isn't that big until you get Power Armor Mark II. So let's just chop. I'm not gonna waste grenades on like, when there's like one tree in the way. Over here though, definitely grenade this. So if you actually run and do this like at the very edge of the thing, you can actually run and not get hurt, which is pretty awesome. And we're just gonna dr bring this out now. I, eventually I'm gonna have like an actual main line for everything as I've done here but this is not something like it would make no sense whatsoever to connect to the main line because it would go like over and then somehow back so having a dedicated line here does actually make more sense to me uh, in this situation just due to its location and stuff <clears throat> so I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring this up so let's actually let me and I did get some grenade damage, apparently not quite enough, to one-hit the trees. It's very close to one-hitting these trees. Ouch. <laughs> See, this armor is much more durable, though. All right, let's go ahead and set up our pump jacks and kind of figure out where we want things to lay out. So the pump jacks, very simple. Again, I think I explained this. We first set up oil. These work on percentages, and, uh, you know, they'll never drop below a certain percent. So it's essentially infinite. I do that now we do want to try to be somewhat strategic with our pipes so like doing this is going to be decent um yeah i think we'll do this and then underground to here so those are connected and then i think we'll bring this over and down like this i do kind of like this rock here actually like it's kind of silly to <laughs> Leave it here just for the sake of leaving it here, but uh, this, I'm trying to figure out a decent rotation. I think, I think this is actually going to be our best bet. So just whoop, drag out here like so. And, uh, and there we go. So that's gonna cover this. Let's just make some power pulls. And I will actually use some of these big ones to go between here just because it will be less stuff. We'll run this here and then connect that and connect that. And this guy like that. And then, so actually, yeah, I think we're gonna come over some more. There we go. And this can just connect in like that. And we'll need to run power up here, which I probably should have done first. <laughs> But that's okay. So the train's gonna come in and it couldn't just pull in like right over here actually next to the rock would probably work quite well. So let's clear these trees out a bit. 
There we go. And I'm actually going to draw this this way. Make sure we have enough room. Right here looks good. Just kind of eyeballing it. So he's going to come up right into this area. And then bring it down here. Once we get power hooked up, we can take out those bases up over there. Okay, so I went one too far. There we go. And I'm not going to continue this because I don't think this rail will be used for anything else. I mean, maybe if there's more oil this way, but I can't think of anything like any other materials we would really want to bring in over here. I mean, maybe copper or something or stone. So, I mean, I'll leave it open. There's stone here. Uh, so we could figure something out. But for now, this will work. So let's go ahead and place a station and we'll build our train and kind of figure out what we're doing here. So... Uh, first off, we are going to want a tank here uh, for the oil to go into before it goes into the train. And the reason for this is exactly the same reason we put chests, the buffer chests, on the train load and unload like this, right? Is it's a buffer, but just for liquid. Because if we don't do this, I'm actually going to leave the him there too. Looks kind of nice. Um, if we don't do this, then what will happen is, you know, these guys will only work when the train's here. And it will take forever to get the thing filled up because they're only ever going to be working while it's here so it has to do it on demand rather than you know being able to work and fill up a tank the entire time the things the train's gone uh, and then we'll do the same thing on the other end so we have our locomotive and then we have our rail tanker which is super awesome and we're going to put another one here so this guy this guy was 25k which is the same as a storage tank it used to be 75k um but they reduced it so it's now 25 so we're going to take a storage tank and we're gonna stick him right here. Okay, now let's connect up our pipe. Ooh, nice, just barely under and I think, um, we could do this. I feel like this may not work great, we'll see. Uh, we may, cause like both these connecting into one may not be great. We may want it to just come down, but we'll see. So we do that and now a pump. Previously uh, with the pump, you kind of had to just know what position to put it in or guess it was kind of silly um but now it's really nice when you do take a pump it'll show you where it connects and th these things are um three separate hookups and again this used to be like if you're playing on not if you're not on the experimental version um this used to be actually three separated tanks that you could separate out for three different liquids which they removed but uh, it's still three hookup points. So even though it's all one thing, you still have three hookup points and it will show you, which is really nice now, you know, where, so I could put it here or here for this middle one. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter which one I hook it into just as long as I'm hooking it into somewhere on the wagon. In this case, we're going to do this. And this is one of my favorite parts in like the entire game <laughs> is how this pump works and stuff because it's super cool. Uh, so we're just going to run this up here. Once we get power, he'll turn on. Uh, but he's going to pump from this, lift up, and connect into the top of this, and then pump into here, and this is going to carry the liquid. Now, there are some other options. Uh, there are uh, barrels. You can barrel liquid, which I haven't really gone into yet. It's pretty straightforward. But uh, you are able to barrel liquids if you want to. Now, barrels were also nerfed or reduced uh, in, in regards to, like, just how, how good they are. Um, so usually I still, I kind of want to do a tanker wagon just because it's, well, it's really cool um, and the barrels were nerfed. But yeah, essentially you can barrel liquids and then you could just put it in a normal cargo wagon like with inserters, right? Because then it's an, an item and, and not directly a liquid, the liquids within the barrel. So that's certainly an option if you would prefer to do that. The one thing with that though is that you, uh, you then have to have a way to get the empty barrels back and and such and then you know make sure you have your things separated correctly or you know divided correctly so you can make sure you get empty barrels back while getting full barrels uh this is actually <laughs> great that's where my other locomotive went <laughs> i was like i knew i made another one. Oh man uh but yeah so the liquid tanker i mean you used to have to barrel it there, there was no other option until the 0 15 update where they added the tanker wagon. And this just makes it a lot easier and it's super cool as a bonus. So let's talk about the power so we can take out those bases and then uh, and then hook up the other power. So we're gonna get this and he should hook up 
like here. We'll put it back here. Okay, so that does that. And what we're gonna do, so let's name this oil drop off. I don't know if there's one F or two, I think there's two Fs. I can't spell or two Ps. <laughs> I am dyslexic, all right? I do have problems spelling some words. Uh, so there's that and then we'll say oil pick up one or we'll just say oil one to make it uh, the same as the other outposts. Uh, so there's that and then so now what we want to do is we want him to actually uh, automatically drive to here because that way it'll make sure it lines up right. So inventory empty and the only reason he's not going back is because it doesn't have fuel. So now what we'll do is we'll make another pump and another tank and we'll export out. So you can see here, we'll just export from there and we're facing it the other way. I, I watch the arrow here and because he now needs to pump out rather than in. So let's do that. And if we give him power, you can see, is that cool or what? He's, he goes in there, there's no liquid yet, but he'll hook up and then all we need to do is hook this in. And I'm actually, I would like to hook it into this far one now really, we probably should be sending our other oil into a tank as well, like the same tank, but it's so minimal, I think it's probably fine as is. Uh, now of course, <laughs> of course what's happening now is we're back feeding uh, into here, but that's okay, because uh, it will go out. It's actually probably, probably should just throw a pump on here. Yeah, let's, let's do this. So we'll do that. And then this way it'll make sure that we're not like back feeding the oil from here into this tank before it gets to here, because that's kind of what we were doing. Uh, so let's do that, and then fuel, and it looks like we did just finish nuclear power, which is awesome. So let's go here, uh, inventory full, and uh, and yeah, so nuclear power is done. Let's. I wanna check my labs. We are still good on packs. The packs are keeping up decent, except for red and green, which I think are because, yeah, they're level one assemblers, where the rest of these are level two, so we do need to upgrade those. So we're zipping along here. This guy is filling up. He's already full. That goes pretty quick. And there we go. Boom. He's filling up, which is awesome. Even the little graphics in here. Oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> so you can see how quick that went. These pumps pump at a ridiculous speed. I think it's 9,600 fluid a second um, that this pump can do. So going straight from a tank to a tanker wagon is really good uh, because 9,600 a second is way more than what a pipe can do. So if, if you go from like a tank, so if you do like tank and then pipe and then pump, it's not gonna really do as much because it has to, it's it's lower down through the, the pipe. Like if you were to like go through a garden hose and then into a fire hose or whatever. Uh, so we, uh, we have this guy just going directly cause he can now pump extremely quickly. Now, of course he went and filled, this isn't, full yet. Uh, so this is going to take a little bit because he now has to actually wait for these to be done. But uh, it, it won't go too slow. Uh, you can see it's probably like 1000 every 20 seconds, 15 seconds or so, which is pretty good. It's a lot more than we had. So let's go and take out these biters. Like I said, I'm not going to do a ton of biter fighting on camera, but I haven't really done laser pushes on camera aside from the stream. Uh, so I'm going to just do a little bit of that with you. And actually, I would like to get another grenade damage because I'm super close to being able to one-shot these trees. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and make some of these guys. And there we go. So this is gonna go like that. We're gonna place some here just for safety. And a laser turret creep is even easier than the gun turret creep because you don't, you don't even need to put bullets in. You just put power and they'll destroy everything. <laughs> Uh, now we do want to be like these guys eat a ton of power. You can see our power spiking here, and these lasers—it's only like three of them shooting. And they're using nine megawatts. You know they take uh, 3.1 megawatts when they shoot, which is pretty ridiculous. Ouch! That did actually hurt. But these guys are doing a great job, and you can see like how quickly. I mean, they just absolutely destroy stuff with some upgrades. So uh, that base is done, we'll just hit this one above us and we'll be good to go. Then we'll head back and I think we will make a fusion reactor and get our armor all set up so you guys can see that. And here we go. I will want to put some lasers around this oil just because, you know, uh, the biter expansion is off, but if our pollution spreads far enough, 
then it could become an issue if it's hitting other stuff. Oh, geez. Whew. I think that was that a big spitter. That's a little bit scary. I'm gonna need some shields here real soon. <laughs> I'm really gonna need some shields. Oh, yeah, big biters too. But the lasers just do so much damage. So there we go, I'm just gonna spam them down, they kill all the worms, they're gonna kill everything. Boom, easy as that. And uh, really, you just have to be uh, be cautious. I mean, I wasn't giving much like instruction here, because I kind of did, you know, the first time we did it with normal turrets, like bug brains all over the floor. Uh, but you know, it just it just is uh, it's like a combination, you you know, of being cautious, but then you know, being aggressive enough to where you actually make progress, and uh, also being durable enough. The fact I did have a power armor helped a ton, because like back on this first base, you know, where I was brought down to like a third of my armor health, I would have been dead if I had like just a heavy armor. So you know, you do want to make sure that you have enough protection uh, and resistances like this, but. Once you get lasers, get a few upgrades. It was a bit difficult on stream. I was clearing out some bases by the Iron Outpost without upgrades, and it was a bit difficult. Uh, but besides that, it seems to work pretty darn well. All right, so I think I would get in a train, but I'm afraid I'm going to hit that guy. And I would not win that battle. <laughs> trains, uh, trains do have, like, weight and... Uh, and like momentum so <laughs> if you've seen some of my other videos uh that where i play multiplayer with like colonel will and such um you may have seen us just completely pac-man trains it's entirely a thing it's definitely a thing in the game where you know if a train going faster and with more uh just more mass uh hits another train it's just going to obliterate it <laughs> it's actually pretty hilarious uh but not really something i want to happen to me so let's actually do i i do have a car Let's, uh, let's get in our car. And another thing I want to do, we don't have any red circuits, but I do want to put down some storage because our logistics bots will then start taking this stuff out of my trap slots. So let's actually do that. Let's stick one right here and get rid of that. Now, theoretically, these guys should, and you can see they're heading over to me now. I'm going to take all this stuff out of my trash slots and, uh, and then dump it into the storage chest. And there we go, boom. Easy as that. Now we can also get a very cool thing if I can find it. It's logistics. Um, I need to apparently search for this. Trash. Auto character logistic trash slots, uh, which we can get after this. And what that'll do is you can then go into a setting very similar to your logistics thing and actually have it auto trash where you can, it, it's just like a condition on insert or whatever where you can say, you know, if iron ore in my inventory is more than 100, auto trash all the excess, which is really nice. Um, auto trash meaning put it into your trash slots. So like here, I would say I only want 50 stone. So then all the rest of this would just go in here and I'm just shift clicking it into there right now. So let's grab these blue circuits, which are totally backed up. Look at that, guys. That is an awesome sight. Man, that is such a beautiful sight. Our science is keeping up really well. Uh, so let, that, that's batteries. That's not... <laughs> That's not that. Let's turn him because I don't want him taking stuff right now, but I may in the future. And we can do that, and we can now make a fusion reactor. And we will need probably batteries, which I just walked past. <laughs> so let's uh, let's grab some red circuits too. We need that for all kinds of things. And some batteries would be fantastic. So we're gonna make a row of port, maybe two. How about two? And we'll see what we can do. Also, I did want to upgrade. Uh, upgrade the uh, science machines over here because this will then keep them in line with the other sciences since you can see they are falling behind a little bit and we do want to upgrade the components as well now you can see those robots flying towards me and they left it's because I left the logistics network again remember they can only be in the logistics network so as soon as I get out of that area they can't follow me so that's why they turned back but if we now right click on this, this fusion reactor, as you can see, it's fairly large. It's a four by four. So that's why it wouldn't really fit in the other one. But we put this in here. Um, our night vision will now be totally charged all the time because 
Now these only give us 10 kilowatts. This thing gives us 750 kilowatts. So this only needs 10, you know, that's easy. Uh, then these take, it's a little bit different because they take two times one megawatt for the charge rate and then internal charge recharge rate or bu internal buffer recharge rate is 3.5 megawatts. So it doesn't really, but what it will do is charge them up initially, you can see here. Uh, now this, these actually combine really, really well with batteries because the batteries will hold up energy and then when you need to charge your robots, it'll pull from the batteries and then your fusion reactor because if it's just pulling from your fusion reactor, it's not really going to be able to support much because, I mean, you saw the, the rate there, you know, when they're, when they're charging. Um, it's two times one megawatt, which is because there's two charge stations on this thing. So it's a megawatt per charge station, which is a lot. Uh, and then the, uh, and then it can also support 10 robots down there. You can see robot limit. I'm not sure why my battery isn't charging. Uh, these are still charging. Wow, this thing's really slow. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and make some of these. Now there are, a, there are a level two battery, which is way better. This holds 200 mega, 20 mega joules. And the Mark II battery holds 100 mega joules. So it's five times that, uh, but this will still be good. Uh, can we actually, we could, if I rearrange some things, I think we could put an exoskeleton in here as well. So these guys are done charging. You can see my battery now going up. You can see, I mean, it's slow, but this is still way faster than whatever my solar panels were doing. And actually I would like to see, so this is a two by four. That would fit here. I think we may be able to fit one in. Let me see what we need. We just need processing units. So let's grab a few of those. It will make us run a little bit faster, which would be awesome. It is a 30% speed increase. And then I don't think I've mentioned this yet because I haven't used it yet, but the uh, concrete and brick does increase your movement speed. You can see down there, walking speed 130% and this is 140%. So if you create like paths, which we will want to do eventually, like along your bus or whatever, it will really speed up how you, like how quickly you can get around. Uh, let's go ahead and build one of these. Now it does get a little bit silly later on. You, I mean, you can have any number of these you want as long as they fit in your thing, which obviously in real life, you can't be wearing like 10 of these, but uh, hey, we're not playing real life. So now moving these did discharge them. I'm not really worried. Uh, let's get rid of that. So it looks like I can only have one robo port, unfortunately. I could have another if I took out a battery. Actually, no, we can just move these. So your layout does matter because you know, it does allow you to do some different things. And we can't put, we could put solar panels in here. I guess I'll just stick them in there for the heck of it. Uh, but, you know, having those Mark II batteries would be really nice because it kind of condenses it down. Now it's recharging these again, but you can see we are moving a little bit faster. And uh, the exoskeleton takes 200 kilowatts, which is, you know, a little less than a third of our fusion reactor power. And I think that does it. We are at 28 minutes, a good stopping point. We got the oil set up, which is awesome. We got our power armor good to go. And, uh, you know, if I go out in combat, maybe I'll just, you know, I can just always remove one of these uh, or remove my night vision if it's during the day and put in a shield, which would be quite good. You know, the shields, uh, we haven't actually unlocked a shield. We should get shields. Uh, can, I, can I find a shield? Shield. Uh, these guys, uh, base ones are 50 hit points. And these are 200 or 150, sorry. So they are quite good. And then we will want the personal laser defense. That thing, man, I tell you, that laser defense is so good, especially in a Power Armor Mark II where you can have like two fusion reactors and then just fill it with laser defenses. It's uh, pretty ridiculous. You're just like a walking orb of destruction. So uh, I think that's going to do it, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and found it helpful. If you have any questions or comments, do leave them down below. And uh, until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.